Hey everyone, this is uh, going to be a video about how you can use uh, Nintex for Office 365 to create a form, to have somebody fill in that form, add an attachment, and then after the fact, have a workflow start, gather up some of that information from that form, including the attachment, and generate a really nice kind of PDF out of it. Now, I'm, pretend I'm doing the, uh, the air little quotation marks when I say create a pretty uh, document because I'm not really good at making things look pretty. Hopefully I can at least make it work. So what I'm going to do now is show you first of all this list here. So I have a list called purchases, it just has a title, it has this multiple lines of text field which is uh, set to plain text called purchase items and that's it for now. Now what I have, I'm going to move that across here, is this form. Again not pretty but it's just a form just to get the data that I want. So first of all I have a title field, which I want to go in and change the uh, property around whether this is a required field or not. So what I did was I set a current date and current time as the default value for this, so I don't have to always type something in. I also have a repeating section here. Now, a repeating section has a drop-down with, a couple, I think, three items in there, a quantity field, and then a calculated value control right there that just does quantity times, I think it was 125 just something random and then I have another calculated field at the bottom underneath the repeating section that does like a total or a sum of all the items the final thing I have is this attachments control and what I've done in here is just set that there needs to be at least one attachment on this form and a maximum of one attachment so basically when I'm filling in this form I can only have one attachment on this form and that's it right not less not more all right so pretty straightforward. If I go to my list here and click on new, you'll see that I have that simple form. There's my item, I can do item three, put two of those, I do item one, put five of those, and then let's do item two and make 23 of those, right? Now you see I have to do an add attachment here. So let's click on that. And I'm going to select my receipt.png, click on open, done, and save. So there's me filling in a form. So think of it, this as being I'm out in the field, somebody's filling in the items that they want to purchase, for example, and then once they've purchased it, you have some sort of receipt, they want to take a photo, attach it to this item. So that's basically what that was. I know it's a really kind of bizarre scenario, but this uh, should just show you how to get that data into a document at the end. All right, now I don't have a uh, condition that says start this workflow when I create the item, so that's just me being lazy. So let's just manually start this workflow, but of course, normally you just have a workflow start automatically. All right, purchase printout workflow. So there it is, it has now started. I'll go back. Click on refresh, just make sure it's running. It should be in a running state. Perfect. Let's click on that. Now you see there it has started, so it's going to be doing some work. All right, let's give it a minute because it's going to basically do a number of things, and I'll show you after the fact what it's actually doing. All right, so now you can see that at least I've done, started to do some work here, and what it's done is actually gone and queried SharePoint to figure out do I have any attachments and what are those attachments? So that's where what all this uh, data down here is. I'll actually speak to that in a moment. Now, what it's now doing is taking all that data and saying, okay, based on the data that I found, build out the URL to that image, that attachment. So there it is right there. And then it's going to go and generate that document for us. So again, let's give it a moment and let's see what happens once it's actually generated the document. All right, so we gave it a little bit of time and you can see there's a message here saying document generation usage entitlement. That means that it's actually going to generate a document and our workflow status is set to complete it. So let's have a look at what the actual item now looks like because what that's done is generate a document and instead of dumping it into a document library, I've actually just attached it back to the original item. All right, so there's my form that I filled in. And there's my receipt, and now I have this purchase printout PDF. So let's have a quick look at that. 
as you can see, I just took a template out of Word. I didn't make it look pretty or anything, but I did dynamically put in this data from the title field. I did generate this table, which looks like I have an extra space here that I need to fix, but you can see how I've grabbed all that data from the form. And then if I scroll down here, there's the attachment that I basically just grabbed from Google Images, right? So here's my receipt. So you can see how you can quite easily add an image or an attachment back into a, a document that you are generating. All right, so how was this all built out? Let's have a quick look at the workflow. I'm not gonna go through all the bits because there's, a, it, you know, it might get a little bit messy here, but okay. So the first part is this parallel block. Because in my form right here, I have three fields. I have the item dropdown, the quantity, and the, the total. And what I wanna do is grab all, that, uh, all those pieces of data. So that's why I have a query XML action. Right here, I'm saying, give me the purchase item. That's the drop down, And I'm storing in a collection called collection of purchase items. I'm doing the same thing for quantity. Oops, that should be quantity. And that's me being lazy. So let me fix that. Oh no, sorry, that's right. I'm losing my mind. So this is actually the multiple lines of text field in my list item. So that's fine. So I'm pulling out the purchase quantity, storing it in a different collection variable, and then again, doing the same thing, but this time for the purchase item total into another collection. So now I have three collections. Each of them should have exactly the same number of items in them because you need to have all that data in the repeating section. So this gives us all the data that we need so I can actually rename this to get get data from repeating section. This I've disabled, this was a little bit of debugging uh, that I had. Now, I'm gonna point out this really interesting thing. What we're gonna do is first look at this call HTTP web service. We're making a REST service call to say, give me the current list and then give me the current item on that list and find me all the attachments, right? All the attachment files. This is going to return back a bunch of JSON data. And I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. But if you don't set this, this request headers, you get data that looks like this, right? This is the data that you will get. Now you can see it's a little messy, right? This is just JSON data. And although there's probably an easy way to get the data out of this, I did not find an easy way of doing it. So instead, what I did was this. I built this dictionary to make sure that I set the content type and the accept uh, headers to, this is what I want the data to look like. It's basically JSON data and I want it to be verbose. And what that meant is that I now get data in this format. So it's a little different, right? But you see there's a D node, there's a results node, and then in the results, you would have multiple of these if you had multiple attachments. But because I only have one, I only have one chunk of data. I made, I made this call because it makes it a little bit easier because if you look at this D and results, I can go over here, scroll down a little bit, go to get item from a dictionary. There's my response that I get back and there's my path to get the data that I need. So let's... Let's actually change this font to, let's do nine. All right. So you'll see here, I'm looking for a node called D, which is up here. I'm looking for a results node and I'm pulling out the first index or the first result, right? Which will be all of this. And then within this, I wanna get the server relative URL, which is down here, right? So I'm getting this data. So this just made it a little bit easier. That's why I had to put that header in because it changes the structure of the data that comes back. So if you guys get stuck with trying to pull that out, uh, pull that data out, then definitely uh, set the header to make sure you get this type of structure. Alrighty, now, now that we've done that, I had to build a string because this is gonna be my URL to my image attachment. Uh, and if we, if you look over here, My server relative URL has slash evangelism, slash lists, etc. So I had to put in the whole HTTPS thing at the very beginning. All right.
So now that we have all the data, we have all the collection data from the repeating section and we have the attachment URL. Now we go into the document generation action. So I have a purchase printout. That's just a template that I have. I'm always including it, which means I'm always going to generate this document and I'm just doing a single PDF file. So let's click on tag document to see what the actual document template looks like and then how we can uh, create all the data or put dynamic data in that particular document. So remember, I've got all those variables with all the data. I've got the item property, so I'm going to have access to all that stuff. All right. So you see here, there's my little token for the item property, so that date uh, and time. I'm putting that in there. Here's my table of all the data. Now, you can learn how to kind of build uh, tables in document generation action, probably another blog post, or there's a lot of stuff on the help.intext.com site. And then there's also uh, this image URL. So let's, let's actually set that to the left. Oops. All right, well, you can, I can play around with that later. But you can see I have uh, everything in there. Now, on the right here, you have this index document tagger where you can insert all the stuff. So I've got my image that I created earlier. I've got my table, my table data. That's how you insert those into there. All right, so pretty straightforward. But if I go back, close this, and go back to this document generation action, don't forget the little buttons at the top here. This is where you actually create your images and your table data. So if I go to images, there's my receipt image that I've given that a name. The variable is the URL. I can click in here, so I didn't have to do anything special, just give it a name and give it the URL because I created the URL in a text variable. I just inserted that into there, so that's pretty straightforward. You can also create your table data. And that's basically saying, let's go in here. Again, you're giving your table a name. How do you want your data to appear, whether you want it to appear as rows, tables, sections, etc. We are going to do row because what we're doing is we're saying, in this case, notice here it says collection variable, collection variable, and if I scroll down here, collection variable. What that means is this table is going to have three columns, and these, ver these collection variables are what is going to define the contents of those columns. So the first one's going to be a string because it's the item name. The second one's going to be a number because it's a quantity. And the third one's going to be a number as well because it's a, uh, it's a currency or a dollar amount. And once this has all been done, that's when you go into your tag document action and you'll see oops, your tag document button here. You'll see all those uh, variables all in that table data, all those insertion uh, tokens. Let's give that a second to load up again. And I just want to show you uh, kind of like the internals part, the internal part of actually inserting uh, a table into your uh, Word document. All right. So if I get rid of this and get rid of that and get rid of that. All right. So the first thing you do is you come up here and you would insert your table. Right. So if you want you know, three columns, you just insert it like that. So pretty easy. Once you've inserted it, click inside the first cell and under tables on the right, you want to insert this start tag. This is what tells the document generation action, this is where we're going to start dynamically building a table. So we're going to put that in there first. Then we're going to insert what's going to appear in that first column. In this case, it's going to be this collection of purchase items. Second column is going to be the quantity third column, scroll down, is going to be the item total. That's it, right? Then the document generation action is smart enough to actually go through and figure out what needs to go where in that particular table. So pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do. Hopefully this made a little bit of sense, but I think the, the hardest part, close that, <clears throat> excuse me, the hardest part is actually figuring out the URL to the file attachments. Once you have that, then you can insert it into that document pretty straightforward. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to add it to the bottom of this blog post. Uh, and if you have any better suggestions, if you find a better way of doing this, let me know because I always love to learn uh, how to do things better, faster, more efficiently. All right, thanks for your time, everybody. See you guys.